evening, everyone, and welcome to beautiful Orvis Auditorium here on the University of Hawaii at Manoa campus. We're proud to bring you another Inskep Live Online's concert series. My name is Tim Slaughter, and I'll be your host for the evening. Skep Live Online is a production of University of Hawaii Presents, based at the University of Hawaii at Manoa Outreach College. I'd like to take a moment and thank our partners and sponsors, the University of Hawaii Music Department, the East-West Center Arts Program, the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, the National Endowment for the Arts, the University of Hawaii, Kaunoa Senior Services, Friends of Manoa Library, and you, our audience. We have been offering programs live and online since April of 2020, featuring artists from around Hawaii, as well as from the mainland and international locations. These artists have shared their talents and cultures with our audiences from the safety of their homes. In an effort to continue to support local musicians, we have created a series of concerts with the support of the university's music department and the East-West Center Arts Program. So we are here at Orvis Auditorium featuring some of the best talent in Hawaii today. We're extremely excited about the series and hope you will tune in for future concerts as well. We also recommend, if possible, to get the full experience of tonight's concert to listen through headphones. And if you check your chat window, you'll see a link to tonight's program. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan Korth, our pianist for the night, who will introduce tonight's program. John? Hello out there, everybody, and welcome to SCEP Live. I'm happy to report we've got an excellent program for you tonight. You're going to hear art songs from three different continents in four different languages and five, no, not five, um, music from over a century. So we've got late 19th century songs through at least one written in the 21st century. It took me a while to understand what art song was. Uh, and, and mostly till I was really studying as a student. Um, I always thought of it as, as beautiful music where I could hear a, a singer and a pianist uh, perform together, but it's, it's really so much more than that. And it starts with this collaboration between the poet and the composer. It's, and it's really the synthesis of these two beautiful art, art forms, music and poetry. Um, so we've got the poet and the composer, and then we've also got the singer and the pianist. So, Tonight we're going to present the quartet, if you will, uh, for these art songs. Those of you who signed up early, if you can, check out the translations that have been sent. I'm just going to provide a lot of insight into all of the text painting and what we're trying to do with the poetry in these songs. Our featured performer tonight is Dr. Maya Hoover. And I was trying to think, how do, how do I introduce her properly? She's a dear friend. She's been a colleague of mine for more than a decade. We teach a course together and we also uh, perform together often. You can see from her bio all the really impressive things she's done throughout the US, Hawaii, and then of course abroad as well. Um, but I thought I'd introduce her how I know her. When we approach uh, a project together, she's always 100% in, both with her excitement level but also her um, fantastic intellect. Uh, she teaches me so much about the um, the poets and the poems, the composers, and, and maybe even the subtle ideas uh, of, of a song or you know, a certain time period of composer's life. And then she also paints such beautiful phrases with her voice. So you're, you're going to hear just a immense control and a, and a broad variety of color from her singing. And, and you know, we do a, a bunch of different genres, but we've kind of focused on this last hundred or so years tonight. So I want to introduce Maya Hoover.
Good evening, good middle of the night for those of you in other later time zones. Good morning to those of you in Europe and any other time zone I've missed. Um, my last performance was with John Korth, March 8th of 2020. My houseplants are tired of hearing me and I'm thrilled to be here with John and presenting this program to you. For the past year, we've all been forced into a state of quiet. I spent a lot of time thinking, pondering, considering. I think a lot of us asked existential questions, like, what's it all for? If we're just sitting here day in and day out. So tonight's program reflects the spirit of looking inward of asking difficult questions, and going on an uncertain emotional journey. The program tonight began with a song I think we can all relate to called El Prisionero, The Prisoner. The prisoner, this, the, the poet, I'm sorry, enters spring, which is a time usually full of love, and instead of love, um, finds themselves in a prison where the only way they can tell if it's night or day is because of a bird that sings at dawn. But then a hunter comes <laughs> and shoots the bird, <laughs> kills the bird, and all that's left is quiet. So from this very literal expression of solitude, we turn to the varied and emotional poetry of Rainer Maria Rilke. This is a song cycle that was written by Ruth Chantal, who also had the skill of adaptation. Uh, she came from a Jewish family, and her life journey was framed by constantly fleeing to safer places from Germany to Sweden to Mexico and finally to New York. These songs were written between 1939 and 1944, so she was barely 20 when she finished the cycle. I love the complexities of this music, uh, the way that she captures the various colors of the Rilke words 
It's extremely striking. I also had the great pleasure of knowing her and working with her. She was herself a pianist, and you'll hear that in the ways that she writes for this instrument. And I know she would have loved the way that John plays them. I hope that you'll follow along with the poetry in the program, which I think is posted for you in the link somewhere, and enjoy this introspective journey into the world of Rilke and Ruth Chantal.
That's a quick transition, but everyone, that's uh, Ruth Chantal. We're going to give Maya just a bit of a break here, get some uh, liquid on her vocal cords, and then we'll, we'll come right back. Um, if you enjoyed Maya singing, I'm going to take a look at my notes here because I want to get this right, but she starts literally next week with an HOT, that's Hawaii Opera Theater, production of Hometown to the World by Laura Kaminsky and Kimberly Reed. Uh, this opera was about the 2008 ice raid uh, in uh, Postville, Iowa. It will be part of the HOT G Digital Season uh, released later this spring. You can certainly go to HOT's website for more information, but i um, so thankful we could do this together because I know she starts literally on Monday with, uh, with a whole new project. I want to thank um, the whole production team that's, that's been doing these concerts, of course, 
But uh, one person in particular is Tim Slaughter. He's um, you know the person that speaks to you at the beginning of these uh, concerts and and is mostly behind the scenes. But I want to give him a huge shout out from those of us who have uh, nonprofits in the performance uh, you know performance venues, performance presenters around Hawaii. He's been doing an amazing job the last year trying to help most of us survive and thrive uh, post COVID. Um, so. Tim, just a huge thank you for all the grants that you've suggested, for all the coordination you've done for all of us that are um, part, part of these nonprofits. And uh, we look forward to a future, um, you know, that post COVID where we can all thrive quite a bit more because of Tim Slaughter. So thanks. I'm going to invite Maya Hoover back to the stage. Hope you enjoyed the first half. The songs on the next half of the program are a tribute to love, to justice, and to human connection. Two love songs from Italy. The first puts hope for the future in love. As life moves forward, may I be able to no longer fear the anxieties of a life of deception. May one glance of his be my splendor and his smile, my treasure. The next poem is by the great Italian poet, Gabriele D'Annunzio. And it takes us to an idea we see a lot in poetry, which is the idea of finding solace in a dream, so much so that we don't want to wake up. And here it's handled masterfully by D'Annunzio and his descriptive word choices. Enclose me, O night, in your maternal breast, while the pale earth bathes itself in dew. But let the dawn be born of my blood, and from my brief dream, the eternal sun. These songs are presented especially for my Italian friends and uh, the Friends of Italy Society of Hawaii. Queste canzoni sono per voi. And finally, a poem from poet Eleanor von der Straten that asks, oh, it's set by Korngold, that asks simply, what are you to me? You are my belief in happiness. Amor. Tutti veri odorni, ma te 
all the events and trials of the past year, perhaps one of the most significant to me was the great political and social unrest, which came to a head during the Black Lives Matter movement. There was a march, and I remember considering whether or not to go weighing safety with justice. And I decided to march because I decided that justice is something that I am worth risking my life for. We offer Litany, a poem by the great Langston Hughes, and set by US composer John Musto as a tribute to this movement and to everyone who lost their lives to injustice and violence during this year. We're honored to be joined by the incredible artist Jonathan Clark Seipert. After that, we'll close tonight's performance with a relatable title, Touch Me. This song was written by Tom Chipulo, a prolific and incredible US composer who I've also had the pleasure of working with. The poem is by U.S. poet Stanley Kunitz and speaks to many things. It speaks to memory, nostalgia, the drive of desire, and ends with words that so perfectly express the past year for so many. Touch me. Remind me who I am.
Thank you so much. If all of you out there in our virtual audience could just join me in thanking these wonderful artists, Maya Hoover, Jonathan Korth, and Jonathan Clark Seipert. This was such a beautiful, beautiful evening. And I do want to say in response to what you said earlier, John, that it's, it's really it's my pleasure to work with so many talented artists and wonderful organizations here in Hawaii and around the world, so thank you. And I want to welcome all of our guests out there. Um, what we like to start with sometimes is acknowledging where a lot of people are watching from. And not everybody says, but, but just to let you know, some of your fans in Mexico and Maryland were, were part of it. Right. <laughs> and I'm sure there were many more from many other places as well. And a lot of our audience likes to know, too, that um, they wish they could be here with us, and, and we wish you could too, and soon we'll be back to that. But for right now, it's just uh, the artist and a, and a wonderful crew that turns Orvis Auditorium into a regular little production studio, all in the course of a single day. So big thanks go out to them as well. Um, there was uh, some, some interest in, in finding out a little bit more 
about what it was that um, drew you to a, a career in vocal performance? Uh, what drew me to it? I think it picked me. Um, that's all I can say. I think that it picked me. I have always loved languages, and I am a very kinesthetic person. So for me, it's something that draws all of these things together, and it, it chose me when I was quite young, and I didn't come into it until I was in high school, thanks to my high school choral music program. So please support public school <laughs> music programs. Um, and then I had very, very good guidance and loving support from my family, my parents, and they let me actually major in music in college, which ends up okay, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> so that's how it happened. Oh, wonderful. That idea of, of support is, is extremely important to, to every budding artist out there, and, and it's something that's sorely, sorely lacking in a lot of, lot of places. So yes, if you can support your your, your up-and-coming artist, that, that was just a wonderful thing to do. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your selection of early songs and how they became part of your repertoire and, and maybe about Ruth Schoenthal? Is that, am I Ruth saying that Schoenthal? correctly? I met Ruth in 2003 in Bolivia. And actually, I was doing a later song cycle of hers that was written in the later 90s that is a little more expressionistic a little bit more, um, let's say, edgy, for lack of a better word. Uh, these songs I discovered later. Well, someone else performed them at the festival. But they, they began to, to, to suit me much better than the others. And I, I, I just love them, everything about them. And in fact, they were criticized as being too old style. So well. I think... And John, maybe you'd like to weigh in on this, but for me, they're kind of perfect. Yeah, and I was just going to say, I can tell they're written by a pianist because uh, you know <laughs> she's writing two and three line sort of ideas consistently. It's, it's so much fun to work on because there's, there's just you know these textures we can create and colors all over the place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a challenge. Okay. And German was, of course, her native language, so the handling of the text is also stunning. And she very much appreciated the colors of the voice with the text. Okay, wonderful. Um, perhaps we can hear a little bit about what makes this successful sort of um, collaboration between the <laughs> pianist and the vocalist. You know, Tim, we teach a, a whole one semester course on this uh, <laughs> every fall, so if you really want to know. No, I'm oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> give, give us the short version. Please. Oh, uh, wow, I'm, I'm not sure I should, should go first. Um, I, I do think collaborating with a, a singer is, is so different than most other instruments, um, starting with this idea of text. You know, I talked about this at the beginning of the program, but it's, it's, it's so text-driven. So in ways that we might think about, you know, building a phrase or especially the use of rhythm, suddenly we have text and we have breath. That are that are so so important to consider. Um, so that I, I think that's the the first thing we really have people try to understand, and then after that, it's it is a real joy, I, and I, I mean that because there's um, there's kind of so much freedom in the way you make music um, in a lot of these art songs. And John is John is really a partner to me. Um, we are trying to ban the word accompanist so that it never has to be uttered again. Um, he is absolutely, this is a 50-50 relationship, and he listens to me, he breathes with me, he responds to the colors that I select for texts. Um, he really is a, a musical partner in the truest sense of the word. One of many reasons I love working with him. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's great. And, and you guys are, are, are it, it's obvious you're such a, a perfect fit for each other in that sense. And um, as, as John said, all of you out there in the audience, he has a course in this. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're still taking registrations for the fall. Yeah. I think. In this very same right. space, actually. Yeah. There you go. Right, Monday afternoons. Um, I do want to take a moment and rethank our sponsors, the East West Center Arts Program, the University of Hawaii Music Department, the Friends of Manoa Library, the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, 
the National Endowment for the Arts, Kalanoa Senior Services, and you, our audiences. I also want to thank my co-producers, which John did not mention. He is also one of the co-producers of this series, along with Eric Chang at the East West Center. And I want to thank our wonderful production crew, M. Richard, Margaret Arakaki, Todd Bodden, Anandev Banerjee, and Nicholas Sheldon. And it's been a pleasure. Um, oftentimes, I don't know if that's fair to do with a vocalist. We have encores sometimes. No, we don't. Okay. Uh, we can offer this as an encore. Thank you very much. There you go. <laughs> yes. All right, everyone. Thank you for um, tuning in tonight. Um, stay safe and aloha. <laughs>